Hey, Farouk here at Direct Hub. I hope you're having a good day so far and your FE exam prep is going just fine. Not perfect, just fine. As I tell all my students, we can never perfect everything for this FE exam prep and we can never perfect the actual FE exam on test day. It's impossible and having that perfection mindset, it's just gonna likely feel overwhelming. It's just gonna leave you overwhelmed. So we wanna avoid that. So we just wanna do good enough, good enough. Some days will be low. Some days you might not even feel like studying. I know I have those days. I don't wanna study. Other days will be good. We'll study, we put in a quality one to two hours. Then some days we can only probably do one hour. The goal is to build that consistently, somewhat stay consistent and stay at our own pace. Don't compare yourself to somebody else's journey. Because as I've seen from many students, some student takes three months, other take six, others take one month. And it depends on the person, on the lifestyle and how much they got going on each day. So your, your journey is yours. Make a plan for you and only for you. Create your plan because nobody's gonna do that for you. But don't create your plan comparing it to someone else. Fit it to your lifestyle to fit, fit it to how much you can do each day. Cause I know you probably work full time. You have a family, you have a list of other obligations. So do what you can. And I would say for somebody working full time with a family, one to two hours each day is a lot. That's pretty good. And if you can do that, you should be proud of yourself if you're doing that during the week and probably some more time on the weekend. So stay with that, stick to your own pace. Please take your breaks and don't aim for perfection. Just aim to do good enough. Go through each section one at a time. Don't skip around too much. Go like in a chaotic manner when you're covering these sections. And from there, you should be in good shape. You will be ready to give this exam your best shot. Today, we got a good practice problem and it's going to be a fundamental one we need to know before taking our civil FP exam. But before that, I just wanted to let you know my course is currently 20% off until the end of November. And this course is designed for those that simply don't have the time to gather the right resources or think about what should I be studying? How should I be studying? What topics should I be covering? Or how should I be learning? What problem solving techniques should I be learning in the most efficient, time efficient manner before my exam date? What tricks and tactics can I use on the actual FE exam? all of that we will cover all of that so you don't have to worry about gathering the right resources knowing what section to cover knowing what problem solving skills you need to build and most importantly how you will build your confidence and how you will build the right mindset to take your fe exam because many courses out there today will give you irrelevant resources that will likely overwhelm you because they just provide too much irrelevant information or information that goes beyond the actual 2022 FE exam. A lot of these courses have long, boring lectures. These long lectures where you see them scribble on the screen, that isn't really going to help you learn. You want to learn step-by-step -step problem solving skills. You want to build that. You want to learn calculator techniques, shortcuts. You want to learn fundamental problem solving strategies that you can apply instantly to solve a lot of FE type practice problems. So if you're looking for something like that, please just shoot me a message and let me know if you have questions. And if you have any questions at all about the FE exam, I'm always here to help. Easy points, let's make sure we get it. Please pause the video, attempt this on your own and see if you get what I get. Now let's get it. So what we're told is we have concrete needs to be poured for a 2000 square foot parking lot with a thickness of eight inches. Three concrete finishers are hired to complete the job, receiving $20 per hour for each concrete finisher. The productivity rate is 2.5 cubic yard per labor hour. The total labor cost is most nearly what? So we wanna find the labor cost as a total sum amount. So we will say total labor cost and that would be just the total dollar amount so please note that sometimes that labor cost is like uh per unit so it's a dollar amount per unit of labor or sometimes it's 
per hour or per day. In this case, we just want to find the total labor cost as a whole. Total labor cost is the goal. And let me denote what we're given. And the biggest thing in this case is actually trying to visualize this parking lot. So let's start with that. So we have a 2000 square foot parking lot. And what I can do is just denote that by a rectangular shape. And that would be this is going to have an area of the 2000 foot squared. Now we know that when we have a parking lot, there's always that thickness. It's like the thickness of the pavement. We call it thickness, or you can think of it as the depth. It's that thickness of the pavement. In this case, it's eight inches. So what I can do is denote that like this, and that would be the thickness of the pavement. And that I can say like this, which is eight inches. So now I already see the units don't match. So this is in foot, this is in inches. Let's convert that inches to feet real quick. So how do we do that? We take eight divided by 12. There's 12 inches in one foot. So I take the eight divided by 12. So I'm using the TI 36. So it's gonna be 0 0.667 feet. So that would be the thickness of that pavement for the parking lot. And the cross sectional area is gonna be 2000 feet. So that's important because we know that when we take the area times the depth, so you take the area times the depth, we get volume. Area times depth is volume. So let me denote that. And that's important for quantity estimating that basic equation area. In this case, I'll call it thickness, but you can think of it as depth as well, will give us the volume. So what we can do is find that volume. Let's just find it. The volume of concrete that we need to pour is going to equal to the area, which is 2000 foot squared. And we multiply by the thickness, which is 0 0.667 feet. And now we find the volume. This is the volume of concrete that needs to be poured. So we take that 2000 times 0 0.667 and we get 133 for what units foot square times feet in this case is going to give us cubic feet foot to the third and now okay we're at this point we have the volume that we need to pour for this parking lot now when we think about this is there's another volume term thrown in there in the problem statement i bet you see it cubic yard cubic yard is going to be usually the volume we're dealing with with estimating especially for construction for the civil civil fe exam so what i can do here is take care of this conversion and put it in cubic yards because i know i'm going to work with that productivity rate in cubic yards as volume units so we know this is a good conversion to know it's also in the fe handbook on page three under unit conversions we know to go to cubic yards there's 27 cubic feet in one cubic yard, yard to the third. So all I do is take that value divided by 27. So I take that divided by 27 and we get about 49.4, I'll do round it up to four one cubic yard. So now that we have, so we have the volume in cubic yard of concrete that we need for this parking lot that we need to pour. From there, it's a matter of canceling units. It's like dimensional analysis. And a quick tip, a lot of these, you will maybe at least five to 10 questions on the exam, you will be able to solve by doing unit cancellation. So that skill is important to know. Now let's do that. Let's do that to actually get the total labor cost. And this is how I would do it. So for the solution, what we will do first is start with the volume, the volume that we need to pour. So it's gonna be that 49, 0.41 cubic yard. That's going to be that volume. Then I know next is we have cubic yard here. I want cubic yard to match diagonally. And the way I can do that is include this conversion factor, basically the productivity rate of the amount of concrete that can be poured. It's going to be per labor hour. So it's going to be 2.5 cubic yard per hour, per labor hour. And that's gonna be the ideal productivity rate where let's say this is the ideal state. Usually we adjust that, but this is 
something we call the productivity, ideal productivity. So what I can do is account for that and put that at the bottom, 2.5 cubic yard. These match per labor hour. So I'll say per labor hour on top. And from there, these would cancel. Now, next, I'll just keep going. What we have is hour on top. And we know that let's grab some stuff out of this. We, this we already took care of. We already accounted for that. We just did this. Now the last two numbers basically is we have three concrete finishers. Note that one's often forgotten. The number of people working, in this case, the concrete finishers are the people pouring and finishing the concrete. We'll say they're doing all the work as an assumption. We have three people doing that. And also we have the, hourly rate they each receive. So it's going to be $20 per hour. So what I can do next is grab that $20 per hour. That's what I'm going to do. So we know that hours on top. So hour has to be on bottom. And we know when you pay someone $20 per hour, it's going to be labor. It's a labor hour. So these do match. They have to match. So it's going to be $20 on top per one hour or per hour. You don't have to have the one, but it's going to be that so what happens is these cancel now we're basically done but one last thing is that amount of people working we have to account for that so if we were to do this we would still get the incorrect answer but the last thing is we're paying twenty dollars per person per hour twenty dollars per person per hour so what i can do is say we have how many people three finishers so twenty dollars per finisher so we can imagine the finisher here on bottom so we can denote it like that twenty dollars per finisher per hour and we have three concrete finishers we just add that to the top so they would be diagonal in this case 20 finisher hour these cancel and at the end we get the value so when we do that multiplication we multiply everything on top divided by everything on the bottom so it's going to be 49.41 times 20 times three divided by 2.5 and we get about 1185.84 and that would be as a total labor cost. So that would be the answer. And the closest in this one would be B. So we would select B and move on to the next one. So this one isn't so bad. So the key here is knowing that the area times the thickness will give us the volume of concrete that we need to pour for that parking lot. Then with that volume, that's the starting value we start with. Then we will play around with the conversion factors that were given in the problem statement and finally get that final answer for the total labor cost, just like how I showed. So no, you may have done this a different way. And if you got the right answer, stick to your way. It works for you, therefore it's right for you. If not, try this approach. Try doing it this way, how I cancel my units. This is how I'm used to it. And this is how I usually teach it in my course. So try it out, test things out. And if you're not getting it right the first time, that's normal. Almost nobody will get stuff right the first time. It's normal and it's normal to make mistakes. It's normal to make errors. It's all part of the learning process. So make lots of mistakes and use that as feedback to learn from and just keep going and going through this practice problem again and plenty of other similar problems. So keep learning, stick to it, please take your breaks and enjoy your Thanksgiving and I'll see you in the next one.